Football Manager 2022 is here. Newcastle have £200 million to spend. I think I know who I'm doing for my beta save. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to win the Champions League in five years. Or at least that's the aim. So first things first, hello everyone, I'm back, I'm Jack, you may know me, you may not. If you're new to the channel, of course, a warm welcome. We've been doing content here on YouTube for the last eight years and you join us for our first series of the year with Newcastle United. This, as I said, is going to be a save game where we want to win a Champions League in five years. We have plenty of money to do it, but of course to dethrone the big dogs of the Premier League is no mean feat no matter how much money you have. In the background, you can see how the save game is set up as well as how I've set up my manager. Today, we have our first game in charge. Uh, spoiler alert, it's Manchester United. It's not, it's not the best of games. I'll be honest, I'm not sure I'm really ready for it. Just before we start taking a look at the squad and where the rebuild is going to begin, uh, what I would say is if you enjoy this video, if you're here right now, if you're excited for another year of Football Manager content, Smash the like button. It's the start of a new year. Let's feed the YouTube algorithm. If we could hit 5,000 likes, I think that might even be a channel record. So there's a name for you. Let's see if we can do it. And uh, well, we're probably going to set a few records today when it comes to record transfers. Just to have a little look at Newcastle squad here. It is a squad which is really, really average. I don't think that's too harsh a criticism. St. Maximan is perhaps the greatest of the players in this team at 24 years old. Let's be honest, he's the most creative player in this team by a country mile. And whilst that isn't necessarily through incredible passing range, it's through his ability on the ball. Superb dribbling, superb flair. Definitely something I want to make the most of. Elsewhere, Callum Wilson, the cheat code himself in Football Manager. If he doesn't get 15 goals in the first season, I feel like I've kind of failed him. Uh, yeah, if you've ever played Football Manager, Callum Wilson has scored against you. There is no one who hasn't had Callum Wilson score against them in Football Manager. So he is certainly a player I would like to get firing. Elsewhere in the team, though, to be honest, I don't think anyone is safe. £200 million is a lot of money to spend. I've, got, of course, got to be a little bit wary of kind of team dynamics and also the hierarchy. Team cohesion in Football Manager is a really important thing. So this first year, whilst we have all this money, I'm not going to nuke the first team completely. I think that would be pretty dangerous uh, in terms of for my own job stability and also just how we perform. Worth noting, in terms of club vision with the new owners, sign high rep players, grow the club's reputation, increase commercial revenue, work within the wage budget, that, that one should be doable. I think we've got £600,000 in excess. And perhaps the most important thing, league expectation is a top half Premier League finish. Now, in real life, I feel like that would be a pretty tough aim for Newcastle with Steve Bruce's squad. However, obviously we have the, the benefit of a first season transfer window and money to spend in it. Uh, I think we're going to be spending a pretty penny to ensure that top half finish. It would be a little bit awkward, wouldn't it, if I got sacked in my first season as you can see here, before any transfers have been made, our prediction is eighth. In terms of tactical vision for this team, I need to kind of evaluate the squad and work out what we're going to sign. Ultimately, though, I'd quite like to get some wide centre-back sorted. I think that would be a pretty cool way to approach a new game with the new player role. Um, of course, if you've not seen the wide centre-back, I've done a video on it. It's very, very fun to watch. It's very, very good. I feel like any time there's a centre-back role that has the attack duty... I have to at least try it out once. So I think we're going to be doing that today. And as I already mentioned, first game of the season is against United. So I'm going to be busy. Don't go anywhere. Let's see how I end up spending all this money, shall we? So in terms of transfers, one issue that I hadn't really envisaged was the fact I was going to need to get rid of some players. Newcastle have quite a big first team squad anyway. In order to bring players in, I need to, to move players on. So we have had a little bit of a fire sale. Dwight Gale, Matt Ritchie, Isaac Hayden, Ryan Fraser and Kieran Clark. A few household names moved on. Not for a great deal of money. Uh, Ryan Fraser, the most notable of these, he has departed to Aston Villa for £17 million. He's fine. He's OK. He's not a terrible player, but he doesn't fit in with the tactical system and the vision I suppose I have for the future here at the club because we're going hipster. I have committed to the wide centre-backs. I think our transfers, when we get to them, are going to kind of imply that. We've gone out and found the best wide centre-backs we could find. Now, in terms of transfers, of course, Joe Willock was a pretty notable transfer in real life for Newcastle. So beyond him, 
Um, all the players north of him in this list are, uh, well, our own doing. The first of these players is Denis Zakaria, of course, the Swiss international, a household name of the Bundesliga, playing for Borussia Mönchengladbach. We have signed him for £7.5 million. He adds to a growing Swiss contingent within the team. Really, really good ball-winning midfielder. However, it's a bit of a big however, he has got a minimum release clause. We're not really Newcastle United Football Club. We are stepping stone at FC because despite all the money we have, our reputation isn't obviously amazing. We're still Newcastle at the end of the day. We need to start winning some stuff. As a result, so many of the players I've brought in wanted release clauses. That is going to be a situation to monitor going forward because there's a few players here who have release clauses that scare me slightly. Our next transfer was smashing the transfer record here at the club. Jolington, a thing of the past. He is still in the under-23s, Jolington. I haven't been able to get rid of him yet. He keeps getting injured. But we have got a new record transfer, and it's DCL. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, 24 years old, £65 million spent. Yes, the English player tax is very much a thing still in FM22. But I think it goes without saying he is absolutely nutty. 24 years old, loads and loads of years of football left ahead of him. His physicals are terrifying. Not only is he rapid, he's also physically really, really strong. Given the fact that behind uh, Callum Wilson, our best players were the likes of Dwight Gale at striker and Jolington. I felt like the striking position was an area that needed some TLC. He wasn't the only striker we signed, though, because I did feel like we needed a little bit more depth. And we picked up Gabriel Barbosa, also known as Gabigol, of course, a player who has had an interesting career, a career where when he's in Brazil, he thrives. When he's come to Europe to play, it's not really quite gone to plan. However, we've signed him from Flamengo for £12.5 million. He has 20 penalty taking. Uh, and to be honest, he looks really, really solid. Given the price we paid, I am delighted. However, there's a minimum release clause. £54 million. Now, if I got that money, of course, it would be profit. However, um, I don't really want to sell him. I feel like he's a really good striker. Originally, I brought him in to be a backup to Wilson and Calvert-Lewin. Then I realised that compared to Wilson, he's actually way, way better. And it's, it's all a little bit awkward. Now... I didn't really want to start him for the first game of the year anyway, but he's got injured. So uh, with a pulled calf muscle, he's not available for selection. Uh, I do hope, though, that when we do call upon him, he is going to be able to get some goals for us. So the next couple of players, a couple of former Newcastle players. The first we have is Mikel Marino. Of course, uh, Mikel was playing for Newcastle a few years ago, was sold to Real Sociedad. We have brought the centre mid home, or should I say former centre mid, because my plan, and this might be a terrible idea, is to play him at wide centre back on the left hand side. I feel like he's ready made for this role. He can do it pretty bloody well. Uh, he's defensively solid and fantastic on the ball. And because he can play centre mid, if we get, say, 15 games into the season and decide to just pull the plug on the tactical experiment, he can also slot in at centre mid. A really good talent, £38 million spent, this one hurt a little bit. Minimum release clause of 47 million. I'm hoping that we're going to win the League Cup or something and convince all these players they're going to stay, or we could be in a bit of trouble. Mikel, however, not the only former Newcastle man we've signed because you may have spotted it. Kevin Mbabu is back in Newcastle Colours. He is homegrown at club, a player who was sold, as you can see, to young boys for £105,000. Of course, he's really gone on to establish himself as a player in Germany in recent seasons. We've picked him up for £8.5 million. He can play right back. That is very much where he's going to play for us. Another Bundesliga player who we've brought in is Nordi Mukiele. Uh, He's fantastic, isn't he? Mukiele, one of the hot prospects in world football. You can see here, £36 million there or thereabouts spent to bring him from Leipzig. Uh, can play centre-back, can play right-back. Versatile uh, and, uh, yeah, going to be a player who fits into our wide centre-back plans out on the right-hand side. The next player, it's not Shola Amiobi. It's not Sammy Amiobi. It's Tommy Amiobi. It, I'd look, okay, look, Shola, I had a word with him. I said, Shola, do you have any signing suggestions? And he suggested Tommy, uh, who was a free agent. Uh, okay, that entire bit's a lie. I've just signed him for the meme. Uh, he's going to chew to the youngsters or something. I, I haven't really figured it out yet. Now, our next player is perhaps the one I am most excited about, Jamal Musiala. This man, I'm so gutted he's declared himself for Germany at international level. Of course, he does have English nationality as well. Um, you can see here, we have signed him from Bayern Munich 
For £60 million. I've spent £60 million on an 18-year-old, which I will admit is mad. I am concerned about the red arrows when it comes to his attributes. However, if we just compare him to St. Maximan, I just want to give you an idea of how good Musiala is this year in Football Manager. I think we're going to look back on this deal in a few years' time as... One of the best deals I've ever done. A stroke of genius, perhaps. He is a tremendous talent, can play anywhere across the front line, and uh, I'm a big fan. And uh, well, two more players we've signed, two youngsters. Santiago Munoz, of course, a player who you may have read about in the news. Uh, Newcastle United loaned him in real life with an option to buy. I have exercised the option to buy him. That might be because he has the same name as the Mexican striker in the movie Goal. And last but not least, a familiar face for those of you who watched our last FM21 Let's Play over in Spain, Pablo Torre. I couldn't not sign him. D doesn't have a work permit yet, though. So, uh, minor issue there. We'll, uh, we'll overcome that when we can. I feel like wide centre-back is going to be the word I've used most in this video today. Perhaps more than Newcastle. Um, yeah, here we have my plan of attack for the year. I want to play a 5-3-2 using a new role. And this is how the team lines up to start the season. Now, you'll notice that we haven't signed a new goalkeeper. Dubravka probably will be our first choice, but he is injured to start the season. So Darlow is going to be starting between the sticks. In terms of the defence, two players survive from the original Newcastle squad. The first of those is the captain, Jamal Lascelles. Um, Ultimately, I did talk about the fact I didn't want to impact the hierarchy too much. I have moved on a couple of the more influential players in the dressing room. Jamal, however, is the club captain, has 17 leadership. I feel like he is going to be a really vital presence this year. Uh, and well, out on the left-hand side, Jamal Lewis holds down his spot. This is probably the weak link in the team. I just feel like if there's an area to have a weakness, wing-back isn't the worst place for it to be. Um, we probably could sign a new left wing-back, but I, I feel like I want to save a little bit of money. I'm hoping that Jamal Lewis can do the job at least for the first season. Moving up into the midfield, of course, we've got, got Joe Willock there and he has St. Maximum playing ahead of him and then Wilson up top. But of course, alongside those six well-established Newcastle players, we have the new faces, the likes of Calvert-Lewin, Zakaria at ball winning midfielder and Babu out on the right-hand side. And of course, at centre-back, as I mentioned, Marino is going to have to learn to play left centre-back rather quickly and Mukiele out on the right-hand side, our right centre-back. Now, I feel like when you look at this team on paper... It looks pretty bloody good. When it comes to our system, we have got the more attacking version that I've got here. There is also this conservative version. I'm going to try this one away from home and the more attacking version at home. We have also got a, in case it all goes wrong, a Gega Press 4-3-3 that we might revert back to. But I'm hoping that's not going to be needed. I'm hoping that this is going to be a stroke of genius. We're going to play some sexy football in the Northeast. Bruce Ball is going to be gone and it's going to be all about the space ball. I guess it's time for our trial by fire. Now, it's not a great sign when, as you go into the game, your member of staff says to change a load of stuff, but we're just going to ignore them and hope that they they are wrong. Um, look, this is going to be a really tough first game. We are going to have, I think, a bit of a rocky start to the season. We've got tough games. I haven't really acknowledged this. Uh, our start to the season, uh, we've got United and we've got Chelsea and Everton isn't really a freebie in our first three games. From there, it should get easier until City and Arsenal. Um, it would be a dream to start with a win today. It would be a dream to start my FM22 live commentary career with a win. Whether or not that can happen, I suppose, remains to be seen. But anyway, we're going to submit our team for this game. I am as ready as I'm going to be for this one. I'm hoping that all the pre-season work that we've done, the pre-season form, which looked rather promising, it's all going to lead to this. And uh, the only player who's reacted well is Jamal Lewis to my team talk. That's why I've kept him in the team. At least he's loyal to me. So looking at our lineup here, of course, worth noting, nine players available on the bench this year in the Premier League because of kind of the rules around the pandemic. In terms of the United team, that's quite a scary lineup, isn't it? Interesting that they've gone with Cavani up top. Did I miss Ronaldo there or is Ronaldo not playing? Anyway, we're at St. James's Park. I'm not calling it the Sports Direct Arena anymore. It's St. James's Park, everyone. We're in the dugout. And uh, I, I did miss Ronaldo. He's out, he's out on the right wing. He's, he's quite good, isn't he? He, he is. I mean, it's... It... Good luck, Jamal. Now, I know this will be asked in the comments, what camera settings do I play on? It is TV camera, lowest height, maximum zoom. I've, I've got your back. Also, 20 minutes in... We've not conceded. 
And I do feel like with this defence, we've got some really big upgrades in the defence in terms of Mukiele and Marino, assuming Marino can learn to play centre-back. Defensively, we should be a really solid team, uh, I feel like, this year. I feel like that is going to be the basis of everything we do. And, uh, well, Darlo just about holds on to the ball there. Bit of a, a nervy start, I suppose. Of course, goalkeeping, not an area we've touched this year. So I am somewhat worried about that. And, uh, well, Cavani's now through on goal and hits it. Just wide of the post. Everything's fine. We're fine. Now, if you're wondering, Jack, why have you gone to 2D? The ball's really hard to see in 3D in the beta. And also, I feel like for observing our tactical system and trying to review it today, 2D probably isn't the worst idea as a starting point. And we do have 3D replays on goals. For the, those of you who want the FIFA graphics, don't worry. We get to watch this um, in 3D now. Pelinio. I, I did try to sign Pelinio on a free transfer. He turned me down to go to Manchester United. And of course, 36 minutes into the season, he's done this. McTominay, Varane, nice build-up play. Polinio turns around, hits it into the top corner. Um, it's not a great start. It's not a great start. I mean, at the break, I feel a little bit hard done by here. We have the better XG. We've looked relatively good dare i say i mean when we have almost 50 percent of possession against united even at home i feel like that's something to be positive about that said i'm gonna get a little bit shouty shouty at half time i'm gonna point my fingers at calvert lewin and callum wilson C calvert lewin i've spent 65 million on you son i need you to turn things around here or well, maybe we can build something out from the back here mukiele Playing wide centre-back, he is going to get forward like that, and he lays it off to his partner in crime in Mbabu, who skips past his man like he's not even there. Mbabu, could he go all the way? He doesn't. It's cleared off the line. Oh, my word. That was a bloody amazing opportunity by Mbabu. Just charging on forward. Unfortunately, denied at the near post. But that's the kind of start I want to see for this second half. I want to see us try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with United here, even if that is going to be tricky. Marino to Jamal Lewis, who so far has had, dare I say, Ronaldo in his back pocket. Big ball over to Callum Wilson. Can he finish this? Maybe they've nerfed him this year. I feel like in previous years, Callum Wilson scores that for breakfast. Unfortunately, it has been dealt with there. And, uh, well, I think the set piece isn't going to amount to anything. It's headed away from danger. Worth noting that on corners, I have got Calvert-Lewin lurking away at the back post as our set piece kind of expert. Also, have we got a free kick here? We have. Uh, St. Maximin is going to be over it. He hits it. De Gea makes a really good stop. Uh, it's worth noting, I don't have very good free kick takers. That is something that I realised just before the first game of the season that we didn't really have them. So St. Maximin is going to take them kind of most of the time. He's not great at them, but I mean, he, he's just a flashy player, so I'm sure it's going to be fine. Willock can't quite manage what Polinio did there. His effort goes just over the crossbar. I'll tell you what, I don't want to get too carried away here. We look lively to start this half. Now, with 25 minutes left, I think it's time for some changes. And I've got I've got a secret weapon. And the secret weapon is Musiala, who I am going to bring in. And the way I'm going to bring him in is through a bit of shuffling. He can't play striker, unfortunately, but he's a super talented attacking midfielder. So we're going to play St. Maximin as an advance forward. Now, this is unconventional as hell. I hate the fact he has 10 finishing. But I feel like besides that, he's pretty well suited to this role. And he's had a really good game thus far, hence the fact I don't really want to take him off. Gabriel Barbosa with that injury, I can't really afford to bring on. And beyond that, I've not really talked about the bench made up of largely players who were already at the club. We, we do lack players on off the bench. We do lack impact, shall we say. This is the kind of game where it'd be great to have kind of a, another centre mid, a bit of an engine, a bit of a workhorse so I could bring it on as uh, the opposition start to tire. I think Almiron is probably the closest we have to that, to be honest. But let's see how Musiala does. I mean, we've spent £60 million on him. He needs to be contributing, as does St. Maximin, in a desperately wide angle. Gives it to Mbabu. That was really smart of him, rather than smashing it in. Musiala, Varane clears it off the line. It was almost the dream debut for the 18-year-old. Perhaps the face of this rebuild denied. And I don't want to, you know, sound too positive, dare I say. We, we look quite good in this game. I mean, if they score now, it's going to be very upsetting. It, it was Ronaldo. He's not on the right anymore. Jamal Lewis had him in his pocket so much, they moved him around. And he scores that. I feel like we had the chances to win this game. I feel like we had the opportunities throughout. 
But as you can see here, Fernandez to Polinio, and then it's just cleared over to Ronaldo at the back post who nods it in. And, uh, well, with that, it's 2-0 to United in a game that we've completely dominated. <laughs> That's upsetting. Oh, don't do it again. Stop it, football manager. We've been the better team. Scoreline doesn't reflect that. We've looked a little bit leaky at the back, to be fair. But I, I feel like there's, there's reason for optimism based on what we've seen. And it's not over yet. There's still 13 minutes for us to get back into this or maybe just concede a third. Polinio is pulling my pants down here, isn't he? Polinio is having a fun time and so is Ronaldo. I shouldn't have talked rubbish about Ronaldo, should I? When I said Jamal Lewis had him in his pocket. They've moved him over. We've defended quite well. I mean, I feel a bit bad for Mbabu, really. At the same time, they have scored the same goal twice. And yet, despite the fact we're 3-0 down, for some reason, I feel optimistic. I mean, we've been humiliated at home, but there's still time. Jamal Lewis, loads of time and space. Inside to Willock, Marino to Lewis. Really nice build-up play here. Calvert-Lewin near post, goes down. Still have double. Musiala hits the outside of the post. I feel like we could have scored three on another day in this game. It's actually been absolutely mad. Apparently, Ronaldo is making things happen today. Who would have thought... And well, with a matter of minutes left, I feel like this game's done, but could we get a consolation, a reason for optimism? Jamal Lewis to Marino, who, I'll be honest, out on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, the wide centre-backs have looked really good in this game. And Babu, who, let's be honest, defensively has been fragile. Going forward, he's looked very good. Uh, he's got Shaw sent off. Doesn't, doesn't really mean a great deal, considering it's now the 90th minute. We've got four minutes to try and get a goal in added time here against 10 men of United, but it's not going to happen. And, uh, well, I mean, when you look at that, I feel like we should be optimistic for the coming season. We have lost 3-0. It's difficult to look beyond that. I'm going to tell the players, despite the performance, I'm happy. At, at least most of them seem happy. Car Darlow in goal just thinks I'm mental, having conceded three. That was the early kickoff to start the season on the Saturday. I mean, the fans have got their money's worth, I feel like, if... Uh, I say we've lost. They haven't got them. They haven't got them. Let's not be silly. Let's not. The only way is up from here. I've just been spanked 3-0 in our first game of the season. I will be honest. This isn't quite how I wanted the first episode of this series to go, but I, I guess the only way is up from here. Worth noting, videos with this Let's Play are going to be coming your way just about each and every day. So make sure to be subscribed and hit the notification bell. If you didn't already do it, smash the like button. As I said, let's see if we can hit 5,000 likes. If you've managed Newcastle in FM22, show me your transfers. Let me know your transfers in the comments. What did you make of my dealings? Did I spend £200 million wisely? Uh, I'm scared to read the feedback after this first episode, to be honest. And well, until next time, thank you for watching as always. It is me, Jack. Take care. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you all in a bit. I'm out.